In this Inkscape lesson, we'll learn all about how to use the Bend Path Effect, including how to use it to create custom brushes. Before we begin, I just wanted to let you all know that I'm currently having a big sale on my newly released Inkscape course titled Inkscape Essentials Hands-On Approach. In this course, we'll use an entirely hands-on, project-based approach to learn all of the essential tools and features of Inkscape and how we can use them to create things like logos, icons, and posters. I'll leave links to the course in the description below in case you would like to check it out. To use the bend path effect, we first need to create either a path or a shape. I'll go with a rectangle. Next, to add the bend path effect to this rectangle, let's open the path effects dialog by going to path, path effects, then click this plus button at the bottom, and click on bend here. Now to bend the shape, we have to click this first button in here, which says edit on canvas. This switches us to the node tool and gives us this green line going across the center of the object. Now we just have to click and drag the line to bend the shape. We can also move the nodes of the line around. We can adjust the handles. And if we double click the line, we can add a new node. We also still have the handles here for modifying the original shape. Another option we have in the path effects dialog is to change the width of the shape. We can also do this with the node tool by dragging this diamond handle at the bottom left. Checking this box here will scale the width of the path in units of its length. This next setting will rotate the object 90 degrees before bending it. We can see this better if we go to the pin tool and create a path, add the bend path effect to it, and check the box. Checking this last box will simply hide the width knot, which is the diamond handle we use for adjusting the width of the object. Back at the top, we have three other buttons here. The first one copies the bend path into our clipboard, so now we can press Ctrl V to paste it on the canvas and see what it looks like. The next button, which says Paste Path, lets us use a copied path as the bend path for the object. For example, we can go to the pen tool and create a path. Copy it into the clipboard with Ctrl C, select the shape again, and click the Paste Path button. The last button, which says Link to Path in Clipboard, is similar to the Paste Path button, except it will actually link the object to the copied path. At the moment, because we use the Paste Path button, if we modify the nodes of this path here that we copied, it won't affect this object. But if we select the object again and click the link button, now if we modify the nodes of the copied path, we will also modify the other object. We can also use the bend path effect on text. First, let's pan over here by holding down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. And let's zoom in some by holding the control key and scrolling up the mouse wheel. Now we can switch to the text tool here, click in the canvas and type something. Before we can apply the bend path effect to the text, however, we have to turn the text object into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. This gives us a group of paths. And the cool thing about bend is that it also works on groups. So now we can click the plus button at the bottom of the path effects dialog, choose bend, click the edit button, and bend the text. We can adjust the width of the text as well. We can also give the text a background, like maybe a ribbon. To do this, first let's remove bend from the text by clicking this minus button in the path effects dialog. Now let's go to the squares and rectangles tool and create a rectangle. To make the rectangle look like a ribbon, we can first turn it into a path by going to path, object to path. Then let's switch to the node tool, select the two left nodes, and click this plus button up here to insert a new node between them. Let's do the same for the two right nodes. 
Now we can select just the two new center nodes. Click this button up here that says show transformation handles for selected nodes. Then hold shift and drag in one of the scale handles. Alright, now to switch to the select tool and select the text. First we need to click this button up here that says raise selection to top so that the text will appear on top of the ribbon. Now we can hold shift and click the ribbon to add it to the selection. Then open the align and distribute dialog with this button up here and align them vertically with this button and horizontally with this one. Now we can select just the text, change the color if we want, and scale, it, and scale it up or down while holding shift and control to keep it centered and proportional. Okay, to bend these objects, we first have to group them by selecting them both and pressing control G. Now we can go to the path effects dialog, add the bend path effect to the group, and bend it. Alright, now let's see how we can use the bend path effect to create custom brushes. If we go to either the pen tool or the pencil tool, we have the shape setting in the controls bar. These two options, from clipboard and bend from clipboard, are both great for creating custom brushes. From clipboard uses the pattern along path path effect, and I actually have a video about pattern along path and how to use from clipboard to create brushes. You can find a link to that video at the top right. In this video, we're going to go over how to use Bend from Clipboard, which uses the Bend Path Effect. Let's first use it to create an ink blot brush. To do this, we can switch to the Stars and Polygons tool here. Make sure we're on star mode, set corners to something high like 20, and create a star. Let's make it black, and we can drag off this inner handle here to adjust the base radius. We can also round the corners using this rounded setting up here and we can randomize them. Okay, now we can switch to the select tool, copy the object into the clipboard with control C, then switch to the pencil tool. Let's first put smoothing here on something high so that the path will be pretty smooth. And with bin from clipboard chosen here, let's click and drag to create a path. To make it look better, we can switch to the node tool and adjust the width. We can also click the Edit on Canvas button in the Path Effects dialog and adjust the nodes and curves. To create another ink blot brush, we can switch back to the Stars and Polygons tool, select the star object, increase corners some more if we want, and we can drag one of the object's handles to randomize the corners again. Now let's copy it into the clipboard with Ctrl C, switch to the pencil tool, and draw a path. We can also do this with groups of paths. To demonstrate, let's create a flame brush. First, let's switch to the squares and rectangles tool and create a rectangle. Let's open the fill and stroke dialog with this button up here and give this a yellow fill. Now let's give it a linear gradient by clicking this button. Then let's select the transparent stop here, raise the alpha channel all the way up, and give it an orange fill. Next, let's round the corners of the rectangle by dragging down the circular handle at the top right. Now let's turn it into a path by going to Path, Object to Path, switch to the Node tool, select the three nodes on the right, and combine them into a single node by clicking this button up here. We can also hold control, grab this handle at the top left node, and drag it up a bit. Let's do the same with the bottom node. Then let's hold control and move this right node to the right a little more. Let's now create another layer for the flame. First, let's switch to the select tool and duplicate the path with the control D. Let's give this a flat yellow fill by clicking this button, then give it a linear gradient. Now let's hold shift and control and scale it down some. For another layer, let's just duplicate this one with Ctrl D, hold Shift and Ctrl, and scale it down a bit. Let's create one more layer by duplicating this one with Ctrl D. Let's make it white, then give it a linear gradient, and shrink it down while holding Shift and Ctrl. Now let's select all of these paths, go to the Align and Distribute dialog, and align their left edges with this button. 
Now let's group them together with Control G, copy it with Control C, then go to the pencil tool and create a path. And that should do it for the bend path effect. I encourage you to practice it by creating some more brushes. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.